you know, what uh, all of us collectively went through in the months of April, May and till early June was a nightmare of unimaginable proportions. However, as we head to the end of this month, it seems as if all is forgotten because a lot of these people we saw in those hookah bars, dance bars, uh, in those rave parties just couldn't care for them. Life's uh, back as it was earlier and they're literally inviting a third wave. Now, on a very serious statistical note, if this is the manner in which people act, how soon could this third wave be upon us? What form and shape may it take? What can we do in terms of policy, in terms of behavior to prevent this? Because people clearly, many of them at least, have decided that enough is enough. We've been locked up for too long. Now we don't care. Let's get out of it. Uh, joining me on this broadcast is Professor Manindar Agarwal. He's a professor at IIT Kanpur. He's been a member of the National COVID-19 Supermodel Committee of the government. Uh, we have Dr. Vishal Rao. He's a member of the Karnataka COVID Task Force, well-known oncologist. Uh, K. Sujata Rao has been a former health secretary. We have Aparajita Sarangi, Lok Sabha member of parliament, spokesperson for the BJP. Reena Gupta represents the Ahmadmi Party, which was pulled up by the Delhi High Court today. I want to go across to Manindar Agarwal first. Professor, in that investigation, we saw how the demand for rave parties, hookah bars, swimming pools is now once again uh, up and up in a very big way. If people continue to break norms and not follow COVID-appropriate behavior, how soon do you think it will be before a third wave is upon us? Well, it really depends. There are so many factors. Let's assume that people are going to behave the way we, are, we have seen in your clip. Uh, that certainly fulfills one uh, precondition for a third wave, but there are other preconditions also, namely uh, a very virulent uh, mutant, which also needs to strike soon. We haven't seen a sign of it yet, but uh, you never know when it can come. It may already be out there somewhere, still not uh, made its uh, impact on the population. So uh, these, uh, I really can't say when it can strike, but it, probability of it striking certainly increases by this, uh, uh, I should say, very careless uh, Okay, Sujata Rao, what do you make of our investigation and the fact that people are back out in the streets, in pubs, in bars, in discs, at swimming pools, smoking from each other's hookahs, as if, you know, COVID didn't happen. If you hadn't seen the horrors of the second wave, I would have still thought, okay, the first wave didn't uh, impact as many people, so people didn't get mortally scared. But the second wave did. It hit every one of us in different ways, people around us. Uh, many of them succumbing, many of them very badly ill, many of them unwell even at this moment. But now it seems uh, as if that's forgotten, people getting into their cars, heading off to the hills. What are you making of this? Rahul, what I make of it is that, you know, there is a limit to how much a human being can take pain and suffering. And that was uh, those scenes, uh, the amount that people in Delhi suffered was really very, very acute. And I think once you lifted the lockdown, they just kind of went berserk. And we should have expected that and prepared ourselves uh, for it. Uh, what I mean by that is, I think there should have been a, a very calibrated opening out and a massive amount of punitive action along with supportive information. Because let's face it, Rahul, in India, people don't have social discipline. It's like Japan. I mean, no matter how much they suffer, they have the social discipline of standing in queue, and others matter to them as much as their own. Uh, they matter for themselves. But we don't care. We just don't have the social discipline, and that needs to be instilled. So I think, you know, given the huge masses of people that we're dealing with and these kind of crowds that we're seeing, the only way is for doing social policing, uh, not by doing dandalati, but uh, social policing and massive amount of uh, controls along with regulations. Why should a market be open like that, for example, as I see on your screen? 
Why should the whole market be opened up at one go? So I think staggering of crowds, I think is much more of education and definitely punitive action. Let me just end with one point. If you remember the Commonwealth Games, there was that uh, you know rule that where the buses of the Commonwealth players will go, if you got into that lane, you'd be fined 2,000 rupees. And how well the Delhiites behaved, only because uh, the fine was so high. So I think, you know, your, your investigative reporting is superb. And if Delhi could start just with that, and that Malik or whoever the gentleman is that you've even put out on the screen, if uh, stringent action could be taken, close down all those pubs, close down all those, uh, uh, wherever they, they had these kind of rape parties, I think that would go, the message will go down that Delhi means business. Because you can't no, but expect... These pubs